My name is AJ with Top 10 Nerd, and these are the top 10 superhero teams you've never seen before. Part 3. At number 10 are the New Warriors. By the way, all of my entries today are suggested by you guys in the comments, so this one was suggested by Kevin Murray 8803 and TND. Atkinson, so thank you both. The New Warriors were a cool gang of teenage superheroes in the 90s who aren't super well known despite literally being the catalyst for the events of Civil War. See, in Marvel, teen teams aren't as common as in some other superhero universes, especially if they're not made up of mutants. But the New Warriors stood out. They had Night Thrasher, Nova, Speedball, Namorita, Marvel Boy slash Justice, Firestar, Rage, and the Silhouette. A bunch of powerful teens doing superhero stuff. People liked them a lot at first. The team had a bunch of awesome characters with unique powers, but later on, things didn't go super well for them. They tried to reboot the group as teen superheroes shooting a reality TV show. The reality show incarnation of the team was the catalyst in the superhero civil war because in a battle with a group of supervillains while filming season 2 of their TV show, the supervillain Nitro exploded, unaliving most of the team and hundreds of civilians. This was the event that ignited the Superhero Restriction Act and pitted heroes against each other, and in turn paving the way for the Skrulls' secret invasion. At number 9 is the Justice Machine. Thank you to Carbon Dragon for suggesting this one. The Justice Machine is the superhero group of elite law enforcement from another world, Gior well, which initially sounds like this futuristic all-tech wonderland, kind of like Star Trek vibes. But if the name of the planet didn't sound any alarms, it's probably because you haven't read any George Orwell. No, Orwell didn't write this comic, but the world of Jorwell, which is initially presented as a utopia, actually takes a lot of inspiration from Orwell's 1984 novel. Think maximum government control, surveillance, and all kinds of propaganda. So after the team does a mission on Earth and learns what actual freedom is like, they start to second guess and realize that they've actually been working for the bad guys all along. Now we've got Challenger the leader, kind of like a Captain America type of strategist despite his declining age. Then there's Blazer, which got flames in flight, Titan, who can grow 30 feet tall, Diviner with this freaky digital mind connection thing, and she's also Challenger's ex. We got Tailsman, who's altering luck and probability, and lastly Demon, who's a martial arts and acrobatics expert. Pretty top notch team. If you're enjoying the video, so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing the notification bell. At number 8 are the Champions of Los Angeles, suggested by Rodney Lindsay 849 For a Marvel team I've never heard of, this team is stupendously stacked. Like, even the Avengers ain't got nothing on the Champions of LA. Just check out this roster, okay? We've got Black Widow, Angel, Hercules, Ghost Rider, and freaking Iceman. Are you kidding me? That's like the fantasy superhero dream team right there. Like seriously, these guys together are no joke. Hell, the first baddie they took on, and thus the reason for their collaboration in their first place, was to team up against Pluto, the literal Greek god of death. Like Pluto! Seriously, the OG Avengers initially teamed up to fight the Hulk and then Loki, so to say that this team isn't at least on par with the Avengers would be doing them a great disservice. Literally the only thing this team is missing is a Spider-Man. At number 7 is the Legion of Substitute Heroes, recommended by Bob Mathis Friedman 6742 and Aaron Malver 7452. These dudes were not the A team but the backup squad called the Legion of Substitute Heroes, which are a coalition of heroes who had been rejected from joining the Legion of Superheroes because their powers just didn't quite cut it. We're talking Polar Boy, Night Girl, Stone Boy, Fire Lad and Chlorophyll Kid. Some kind of lame names, but they've all got some unique and probably uh, not so flashy abilities. Now, rejected but determined, they decided to form their own superhuman team. The group of rejects were finally able to prove themselves when Planet Man invaded Earth as the main legion was off in space fighting against robot ships. These underdogs stepped in and saved the day, stopping the Planet Man invasion. And as it turns out, Captain Freeze had been behind all of this using the androids and the Planet Man to overwhelm and distract the legion while he he tried to steal the mighty shrink ray. Now Night Girl caught him in the act and that plant went poot. Despite starting undercover, the subs eventually got props from the real Legion. Sometimes being the backup team isn't so bad as they prove themselves as legit heroes. At number 6 is the Cyber Force. Thank you to Kevin Murray 8803 again. This comic book showcased a group of mutants who faced off against Cyber Data, a massive corporation aiming for world domination. See, the mutants were once captive to Cyber Data and underwent experiments 
experiments that gave them enhanced powers using cybernetic implants. When they broke free, they formed Cyberforce to thwart Cyberdata's evil plans. However, the Cyberforce comics faced criticisms for their similarities to Marvel characters like Cyberblade's resemblance to Psylocke from the X-Men for instance. Some readers also complained about the excessive violence and the portrayal of female characters, but despite these setbacks, Cyberforce tried to carve its place in the comic world but gradually faded into obscurity. At number 5 is Cyforce. Thank you to the one ZN1BD for this suggestion. Cyforce from Marvel Comics' new universe series revolved around youngsters affected by the white event that triggered paranormal abilities. Now, unlike typical superhero teams, these individuals lacked matching costumes but faced similar challenges of being different to persecuted, kind of like the X Men. Led by a CIA telepath, Cyforce's members struggled with internal conflicts but united in times of need. They resonated with readers due to their relatable struggles and the absence of coordinated outfits, breaking away from the norm of superhero teams. Unique to Cyforce was their ability to form a powerful being, the Cyhawk, by combining their powers. This amalgamation significantly amped their individual abilities, showcasing their strength when working together. Despite their differences, these youths banded together, which is definitely necessary seeing as their Hail Mary Hawk thing relies on their teamwork. At number four are the Lady Liberators. Thank you to Daniel Streeper2318 for this one. The Lady Liberators are a fantastic bunch debuting in Avengers number 83. They've got Scarlet Witch, the Wasp, Black Widow, Medusa, and they're led by Valkyrie slash the Enchantress, which is total girl power. They actually stood up to the Avengers, calling them male chauvinist pigs back in the 70s. This team was a beacon for fans of strong female characters, basically the OG A-Force. It's like assembling the ultimate squad of heroines. These characters together packed a serious punch, and with their personality, they brought their own special skills to the table. They weren't afraid to challenge the status quo and fight for equality. At number three are the Great Lakes Avengers. Thank you to Bob Marthus Friedman again for this one. The Great Lakes Avengers, aka the Lightning Rods or the Champions, is a Marvel team formed by Mr. Immortal who realized at one point that he couldn't perish away. He decided more heroes would help, so he found folks like Dinosaur, Big Bertha, Flatman, and Doorman. They also rejected Leather Boy because he didn't really have any powers, just a thing for Leather Boy. Anyway, this team was mostly used for comedy relief in the comics as they weren't really taken seriously, but still managed to beat big baddies like Maelstrom and Gravitron. They're basically like the super team version of Squirrel Girl, mostly used for comic relief yet insanely overpowered and underrated. Which I guess is why it made total sense for Squirrel Girl to eventually join the team, albeit only for a little while, because after single-handedly taking down huge villains like Doctor Doom and Thanos off panel, she split the team because she got lazy playing cards instead of fighting. At one point, even Deadpool hopped into this team, but he eventually got the boot because he was too annoying. Which honestly is probably one of the main reasons Deadpool doesn't stick around with any superhero team for long. At number two are the Creature Commandos, suggested by Glenn Morgan Fan. 9411. These guys were once quite obscure, but they're back on track to becoming mainstream again thanks to James Gunn spearheading the animated series in the new DCU. These guys were a freaky team assembled during World War II by the US to scare the pants off the enemy, literally. It's basically a bunch of Universal's classic monsters mixed with superheroes. Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, and other spooky beings are a part of this bizarre squad. In the DC Comics world, these creatures were reimagined as a team fighting in the war. The gang include Lieutenant Shreve, the leader, and a human among the monsters. Then there's the Boogeyman, a creature like the one in the Black Lagoon, and Dr. Medusa, whose name speaks for itself. But it doesn't end there. They also recruited a zombie, a dude powered by futuristic tech, and even a mummy. Yeah, they're quite a lot more eerie than their usual superhero bunch. And coming in at number one is the Power Pack. Recommended by Jonathan Pardo 6549 Thank you very much for your suggestion. Power Pack isn't your average superhero team. It consists of four siblings, Alex, Julie, Jack, and Katie, who all stumbled into their powers after their physicist father's invention attract the attention of battling alien races. It's pretty badass. These kids gifted unique abilities by a dying alien, fought off evil snarks to save Earth, all while keeping their newfound powers a secret from their parents. Their adventures were guided by Friday, a super smart ship given by the same alien who granted their powers. At one point, even Franklin Richards, the son of Sue Storm and Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four, also joined the ranks, seeking a different life away from his super 
super powered family. Now what's cool is that unlike other teen teams like the X-Men, the Power Pack completely lacked an adult mentor, which proved to create a super unique dynamic. Each sibling possessed distinct powers from gravity manipulation to high speed flight, molecular density control, and energy absorption. Power Packs influence birth a slew of young Marvel heroes, but their return is eagerly awaited to see how they blend in with the new teen heroes in Marvel's universe. And that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If there's a superhero team that's so obscure that other people have never seen before, but that you know about, that I missed in this video, let me know in the comments below. This has been AJ with Top 10 Nerd, and I'll catch you all in another video. Peace.